Welcome back to Tech Garage presented by rockauto.com. Now when it comes to wiring, you can't take any shortcuts. And that's even more important when we're talking about a boat trailer because we're in harsh conditions. And I like to go ahead and show you a demonstration that's gonna show you how to do it the right way. Now you can take some butt connectors, put the wires together and just butt connect them. That's fine, it'll probably do the job, but we're gonna take it one step further here. And what I wanna do is I wanna take one of these butt connectors right here, and I'm gonna knock out the center of it. Well, why am I gonna do that? Well, I'll show you here in a second. As we get the center of it out of there, I'm going to use that for an actual solder joint, so I'll take that and I'll try to get this plastic piece off. Now you have to work with this a little bit, tap it down, work it, but once you get those out of there, that's the ticket. That's going to be the piece we're going to use to solder the two ends of the wires together so we don't have any corrosion or resistance in the wire harness itself. So I got the butt connector out right there, you can see it. We're going to use that. Now I'm going to go ahead and get a piece of wire so I can show you the demo. I'll cut a piece of this wire and Brian was saying size matters when it comes to wires. There's different gauges of wire. Matter of fact, the higher the number of the wire, the smaller the wire. So if we're talking about like a 10 gauge wire, that's going to be a lot thicker than a 20 gauge wire is. So look at your American wire gauges sizes. I'm going to strip the ends of it off right there. And then I'll come get the other end of it off, crimp it, strip it, and then I'm going to come back here. Now the key is, I'm going to take this wire, I'm going to put it together in that barrel connector, and then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to solder it so I have an actual connection that's going to stop any resistance or moisture getting in there when we're doing a boat trailer. So I'll take this one, I'll put it in here, and what I'll do is I'll actually solder it to itself. So I can take this wire, loop it around, once I get it in the barrel connector on both sides, and my little holder here I actually got from Rock Auto, which is really cool. Now I can go ahead and I can fill that joint up with solder, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use rosin core solder. That's important, okay? There's acid core solder, but that's for water and pipes at the house, some radiators and stuff like that. I got a little torch here so I can light this thing and we can go ahead and get started. Now, when it comes to soldering, just like any kind of water pipes, I'm gonna solder the center of it. And what's gonna happen, the solder is gonna be attracted to the flame. So once I get this thing nice and hot here in the center, there it goes, starts eating up that solder. That's great. It's gonna fill up the center. I'll fill up both ends. You can see it going in there. It's filling that whole joint. Why are we doing that? Is because we don't want any resistance or anything to get into. Now I got a little damp rag here. I'll just put it over there. When I put it over like that, I'm good to go. I mean, you can see it just like that. Now the key is, I can't pull that apart. So if I wanted to take a truck and get on both sides of this, probably gonna break the wire first. Now, if I was doing a wire or a strand, I would go ahead now and I would take my shrink wrap and I wanna take some shrink wrap and I wanna put it on there. And then what I wanna do is heat up that shrink wrap and that's gonna also protect this whole joint right here. Just take the torch or take a heat gun Heat that up, once you heat it up, we're good to go. It's gonna shrink down on that wire. You got a corrosion-free connection that's not gonna get any resistance. Now, Brian's hard work over there. We're gonna hold him accountable and make sure his wire connections are good as this one. All right, one more mounting bolt to go on the new LED lamp. There we go, and that is secure. You can see the new lamp is in. We also have our LED auxiliary submersible light in and set up. We don't have it wired yet. We need to connect ground there, and we're gonna be in good shape. We also have our power leg run from here over to the middle of the trailer where the running lights will go in next. So I'm feeling pretty good about this, and hey, we even did a pretty good job with these connections, I think. Brian, is as good as my connection? Hey, absolutely. I'm ready to go fishing, Are you kidding man. me? Hey, my Father's Day shirt. Don't make fun of it now. I'm stuck in the garage and you're doing this? I'm ready, man. I'll tell you what, is it this good? I don't know, that's solid. That's something, isn't it? Wow. Let me check yours. That's pretty awesome. Yep, they're in good shape. All right, so we're ready to go. We got the LEDs, just a matter of button it up. What we need to do now is go back and make sure that we pull all the harnesses, hook it up. I think what we're gonna do is we'll actually go to the truck and we'll run a fifth wire there for that light to for make sure reverse. we can run that in reverse lights Perfect. up at the front of the trucks. So and we put in reverse, we'll have that to back in. I think it's a great option. You are gonna love this at Dark 30 next time you're going down a ramp. Well, meanwhile, we'll get that buttoned up, but we'll pull in Project M&M, the Mercury makeover. You don't want to miss that. Stick around. There's plenty more. Tech Garage presented by rockauto.com.